Welcome back. This is Tony and Larry with Larry's Off-Road Center, and we are continuing the project here. So we determined the frame was bent. We're changing directions there. Now we've got this engine out, and I thought, well, we'll throw it up on the test stand. And uh, Larry was checking the in play, and right away he had mentioned, hey, did you notice it's a 6-volt flywheel? So they've got a 6-volt flywheel bolted on to this 12-volt uh, engine. Uh, it's a dual-port engine. And that's uh, possible. You can't do it the other way around. Right. You you can bolt a 6-volt flywheel onto a 12-volt crankshaft. You cannot bolt a 12-volt flywheel onto a 6-volt crankshaft without machine work. You've got to either turn the crank down a little bit. Because on the end of the crankshaft, I don't have one to show you, but on the end of the crankshaft, on the side of it, there's like about a quarter inch of clearance there where it's turned down. On the 6-volt, it's about eighth inch to 316 so so when you go to slide that flywheel on it'll feel like it's on when you torque it down but it will not be seated metal to metal on the dowel pin surface there it will just be seated on the side of the fly on the side of the crankshaft and it will come off it'll come loose ruin the crankshaft and ruin the flywheel so um, but you can put a six volt on a 12 volt uh, uh, crankshaft now we don't like to do that uh, the, probably the reason he did this is because his uh, transmission was six volt, he didn't want to grind it out. You really don't normally, because he, he would have had a 12 volt on here, he would have been better to grind the bell housing out, put a 12 volt starter on it, which would have been, which then it would have matched the teeth of his 12 volt flywheel. That's the other thing, is your teeth are different. Your uh, six volt will have a 109 tooth count. Your, your six volt, your 12 volt will have uh, 130 teeth count on the 12 volt. Uh, flywheel okay and let's take a look at the actual flywheel differences here here's a 6 volt you can see it's a little more coarse here's the 12 volt on the right now this is kind of a, an unusual example because normally most of the time you'll see a 6 volt this diameter here will be 180 millimeters this one here is about 200 millimeters, which is around eight inches, and it's six volt. Now this is kind of rare because this is off of a bus. The buses, when they were still six volt, they were using a 200 millimeter clutch. Most of the six volts are gonna look like this down here, where this measurement is gonna be about 180 millimeters because they have a smaller clutch on the Beetle flywheel. So this is more like your typical six volt um, flywheel. It's okay. got the 109 teeth count on it and the smaller clutch. Okay, so rough example because this is a 12 volt uh, or this is a 6 volt bus flywheel. Okay, so because of the teeth being a different uh, pitch there or different size, the starters are different. So this is a 12 volt starter tooth and it's a little smaller in diameter because the flywheel is a little bigger. Here is the 6 volt. Um, so you really don't interchange them. Now they, you can, I mean if you if you put them on, they'll spin it sometimes, but they'll usually chew it up, which you can see on this flywheel down here. Uh, is that the one that's all chewed yep. up? Yeah. So the edge is all chewed up. So it's not, it's gotten stuck or it didn't spin at some point and it just eat the crap out of the flywheel. So you really don't want to enter, you don't want to mix those up. Now, um, you, it's pretty common if you were to, if you, like how he got away with this, it was a 12 volt engine. He had a six volt starter on there. He had a six volt flywheel, so the teeth would mesh correctly and it would spin it. And if you run 12 volts to a six volt starter, you can crank it for a while, but you don't want to crank it very long because it will burn that starter up. So it, it'll spin it really fast. And that, that'll usually start the engine pretty quickly, but you don't want to, you know, it's not the greatest thing to do, but it will work. So you just want to crank it very long. If the engine's having trouble and not starting good, you definitely better find a problem because you'll burn it up. Now, we talked a little bit about in play. When we pulled, the, when, before we pulled the engine out, we grabbed a hold of the pulley on the front side here and we said, man, let's just kind of see if we can feel in play. Well, we could feel a little bit of movement. Didn't feel bad, it wasn't a train wreck. That one was the one that had the little movement, which is kind of unusual that direction but it didn't feel like a lot of end plate. Now you can correct that end plate. They may have put, when they put the six volt flywheel on, they maybe didn't know what they were doing. Maybe they didn't know how to check end plate and they just put it on and they looked out and it wasn't crazy bad. So, but, but it's best to check end plate on the flywheel side. I usually say grab a couple screwdrivers, pry it one direction. That way you're, you know, you're kind of getting a little bit of movement that direction. 
and then push it in. Now that will that will actually uh, kind of accurately. Now see we're you know you're just this is just to kind of get a feel. Hey, am I going to have to fix that end plate? Am I going to have to line bore that case and and take that out? But when we're accurately adjusting end play on the flywheel with the shims in there, we'll use an indicator. We we'll use a magnetic base on an indicator, and then we'll clamp that to the flywheel. We'll set this at zero. Uh, we'll, we can actually kind of pull it out to kind of get our kind of set it one direction. We'll zero this right there, and then we'll push it in. Okay, so right there, that moved about. That's about eleven thousandths about 11 thousandths in play. So this is too much. We really want 5 thousandths in play. Now, to me, uh, you will probably easily be able to pull that flywheel off and put a little thicker shims in there. You need a combination of three shims and you want about 5 thousandths. It, and I've seen books, three to six thousandths is kind of the range there. Um, th three is, some, some people like to get them as tight as possible. I usually shoot for four to five. That's usually about where I'm comfortable there. Uh, if you know on an old engine, you know six seven thousand wouldn't be the end of the world. Ten thousands like eleven thousands like this. This is this is not the end of the world. But if if I've got one down this far, I'm going to pull the flywheel off and shove it back up as close to that to correct as possible. Because what happens if you have too much in play? It will. It every time you go forward backwards, it kind of beats that case out. Okay, so every time it's just, I mean, it's, you know, it's beating, a, it's just beating into that block a little harder, a little harder. The more the end play is, the harder it's beating into there, and the more it ruins the thrust or the end of that engine block there. Uh, that can be fixed by, by line boring the case to a point. You can fly cut, you can actually cut that thrust 40,000, you buy bearings 40,000 thicker or 80,000 thicker. Now, I mentioned that the other day on that. That is common procedure, 40,000s, 80,000s. Any more than 80,000s, we used to throw those blocks away. Now Ron's got a way where he actually will cut it and he makes a shim to go on the back side of that bearing. It's a little more expensive because it's more work, but he can actually fix some of the ones that are more than 80,000s. So, okay, so enough said about in play. At some video, we'll, we'll actually set the in play on one, put the seal in and show you all that. But, but back on the, all we're wanting to do is get this engine on this uh, rack here. Uh, we talked about the starters, we talked about the, the flywheels. We're going to knock this bushing out because this housing was already set up for a 12 volt starter. Well, we're going to, we're just going to start it. That's all we're going to do. So we, we're going to use the 6 volt starter that's in place. If it'll turn over with them bad teeth, it may not. We may be redoing this, but, but uh, we'll knock that bushing out because that's the 12 volt bushing there. So that's the old stock 12 volt bushing. Now there's four bushings. This is an adapter bushing. This bushing adapts because this is a 12 volt bell housing. This bushing adapts from a, uh, a six volt starter on the inside, but a 12 volt bell housing on the outside. So it's, it's a thin bushing there. I'll put a little bit of oil on it just so it's a little bit easier to go in. So go on up. This one tap in. Oh, it slid right in, so we're we're golden. Okay, so so we've got the bushing in. We'll clear our brush here. We'll get that down. All right, so we got this nice little. It's an old uh, die bench or die cart, and we can lower it all the way down to the ground. Then we just set the engine on there and crank it right back up. So it really saves our back. Line up the strut. Okay. Starter. I know 100% for sure it's good or not, but we are.
So probably in our next video, we'll, we'll get everything hooked up. We'll get a battery charged up and put on here. This is an old rack we made up for just starting and running engines. It was a heavy die bench. Uh, so we had, you know, something we could crank up, get down to the ground to, to mount it. Um, but we, um, We'll get some wiring on this, we'll get a battery hooked up to it, and we'll be able to crank over the engine and, you know, see if it'll fire. Uh, it, that flywheel was kind of rough, you know, we may, um, we may have to pull it off and put a 12 volt flywheel on there, but, you know, it's all we're wanting to do is just see if this thing's going to fire up and run and see what we got to work with here. Um, we'll uh, see what we get into on the next video. <laughs> Sounds great. Appreciate it.